Hey, I want to welcome you this morning. I'm so glad you are here. Um, and uh, everybody's welcome today. We, I, like that, I like that slide. All are welcome. We're glad you're here today. Um, last week, we finished up uh, our series called Rooted. And, uh, and, and the last message of that was for us to branch out and to really bear fruit for God. That when we root ourselves in Christ, that's what His plan is for us, is to actually grow. And, and, to, and to be more obedient and to follow Him and to branch out and do this. And part of that growth comes about when we face our fears and when we're ready to really press into those areas of our life that we don't like to go. But we do it for His glory. And so, this week we're starting a new series and I'm really excited about this. And uh, pull up that next slide. This whole series is called The Uncomfortable Truth. And I want to I, I wanna just take a moment. I, I even shared this with Kaylin. M- many of you, you probably won't even remember this, but two weeks ago, two weeks ago, uh, Kaylin shared with you all, and by the way, your, your generosity and your, just, your gratefulness for me and my family, it blows me away. And we're so just, we are humbled and honored to serve you guys, and he came up and shared about Pastor Appreciation Month in October and all, and he closed us in prayer that morning, and one of the things when he prayed, uh, he said, thank you for letting Shane share uncomfortable truths with us, and as he was praying, I was like, ooh, that's good. (laughs) I said, I think I'm going to have a whole series on that, you know, and so... um, And so I know that some of you might have broke out in a cold sweat when I mentioned this was going to be the title of this series, all right? And uh, and this first message today, I I waited, I shared with you several weeks ago that I wasn't going to tell you when I'm going to preach on it. And I I waited until time went back an hour in hopes that we would have above average crowds today, which I believe we will at this service and at the 11 o'clock service, because everybody gets their extra hour of sleep and they come to church all excited and then I can just bam, all right? So... um, (laughs) And this topic today is fascinating, and it's uncomfortable, and it's very personal. And after giving you only a hint of when this will be preached on, the day has finally arrived. I did not announce it. I didn't want to because I didn't want anyone to conveniently skip out if they knew this was coming. To go, hey, I got an extra hour of sleep. I'll just stay at home today, all right? So here's our title slide for today's message. And listen, don't dismiss it. Because it will apply to you because there is someone in your life that struggles with this. There is someone in your life that struggles with this. Here's our message for today. We're going to talk about the P word. We're going to give you a Christian response to pornography. Oh, it's getting uncomfortable already up in here. Now, your second response to when you see this title up here might be, but, but why? <laughs> why would you talk about that in church? And your first response was probably, oh, crap. That is the answer to why we talk about it in church. Because of that, oh, crap, first response. And so I want to just go ahead, and I want to start off by giving you some data that's just out there. All right? And then, I'm, and then we're going to hit home and make it much more personal. These are some, fi- some findings that uh, are out there, and, and anybody can research. All of this data that I'm going to share with you at the beginning here was, was found either through Christianity Today as a resource or a, a website called crew.org, C-R-U.org, an organization that's involved with campus ministries around the country. So this, this is data. This is very recent data, all right, and uh, it's concerning pornography, and this is what our findings tell us uh, when it comes. Oh, by the way, stay there just a second. Man, we're going to be in the Bible today. Because God's word has a lot. To, you're like, what, God, what, you, this ain't why are we talking about this. God's word has a lot for us to learn when it comes to this um, topic. All right, so here's some findings that we, we, we found as we were looking at this. More than 9 in 10 pastors, so that's more than 90% of pastors, agree that pornography is a bigger problem now compared to the past. We've, we've spoke about that in here a little bit. I, the reason why I believe it is more of a problem today is because of the ease of access that we have to that uh, with all of our different devices and everything. So that's one of the reasons why we want to preach on it is because pastors agree, and I do as well, that it's a bigger problem now compared to in the past. Let's look at some other stuff here uh, about churches and about maybe why you don't hear about it that much. Um, this next slide right here, Cheryl, go ahead and pull it up. 
57% of pastors and 64% of youth pastors, see, they're even worse. I'm just, no. In the United States, and I, this was straight from the resource here, have succumbed to pornography currently or in the past. And what I'm, what I, I'm guessing what that means is that they're either currently watching it or they definitely have watched it in the past. I would be among that 57%. I've struggled with it in my life. Uh, it's no longer an issue for me. Praise God. All glory to God. All right. But uh, it's been a struggle for me as well. So I'm among that 57% uh, of pastors that have succumbed to it in the past. Um, and even more alarming is this next slide right here uh, that you'll see is that 14% of pastors and 21% of youth pastors are currently dealing with it. They struggle with it today, right now. They're, they're up preaching today, and this is a struggle. This is a sin issue in their life, all right? And uh, there's some more statistics right here, and there's a few on this one slide right here that I want to show you on this next one right here. Uh, 62% of teenagers, that's kids 13 to 17, have received a sexual image via their cell phones. It's right there. It's accessible to them. That's kids 13 through 17. They get it on their phone. All they got to do is search, and they, they find it right there. 72% of Christian young adults ages 18 to 24. Look, I want you to look at that statistic. 72% of Christians actively seek out pornography on the Internet. They're actively going and looking at it. And then this next one right here is just, it's mind-boggling. Three out of five divorces cite the use of porn as a major factor in their divorce. 50% of marriages end in divorce. 60% of those which end pornography is a major factor as to why it ends. So what you're talking about there, when you break down the numbers, 30% of all marriages end, and pornography is a major reason why. In fact, and this, listen, um, I, uh, I know that, that that statistic may surprise you a little bit, but I, I, I'm not um, trying to endorse anything here. But I, I watched a while back, I watched a, a, a special on Netflix. Uh, Chris Rock did a, 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 his new stand-up act. It's called Tambourine. It's on Netflix. I don't, don't go watch it. Um, um, but uh, he speaks very openly in that special. He's very vulnerable uh, about his, he, he's recently divorced. And he's, I want you to imagine this scene, okay, if you've not seen this special. And he's speaking to an audience of thousands of people in this auditorium for this stand-up special. And he speaks about his divorce, and he said, yeah, I, I, I recently got divorced because I was addicted to pornography. And the room was just like it is right now. Silent. This is a comedian sharing about it. And he goes, I know, it's a multi-billion dollar industry, and I'm the only one with the problem. Uncomfortable laughter, just like now. It's a multi-billion dollar industry, and there are people in all areas of life that are struggling here. All right? Uncomfortable laughter was the uh, result during that. Uh, so this is fun, so let's continue, shall we? All right. All right. Now, I want you to check this out. This is interesting, okay? I want, this, is, this is interesting. This next slide right here. Seven percent of pastors, that would be churches, run programs for those addicted to pornography. Only seven percent. By the way, I would like to, uh, I just, I, I'm very thankful for this. We're one of this, like, we're in that seven percent. We have a program here called Celebrate Recovery, and it's for people with all kind of addiction problems. And some who attend that do struggle with pornography, and they're here uh, to get help for that. So we're among the 7% who have a program for those who are struggling with this addiction. But I want you to look at this next number right here. Pull that next slide up, Cheryl. 88% of pastors believe that pornography is a major issue in the church. Do you see the disconnect? Do you see the disconnect? 7% of churches have programs to help people but 88% of pastors believe that it's a major problem. And so it's like we're not doing anything about this issue. All right? And so this next slide, this is my own completely unscientific, unverified research. All right? This is my own 
but nonetheless, I believe that it's perfectly true. When you look at those numbers, 7% run programs, but 88% believe that it's a major issue. This next statistic is totally minus made up, but I think it's true. That 12% of pastors currently have their heads buried in sand. Yeah, right? Because if 88% think it's a major issue and they're not, uh, uh, then, then I believe 12% have their heads buried in sand because I believe that uh, it is a major issue. And if they're not admitting that it is, then there's something wrong. Now, if you're uncomfortable so far, I want you to imagine what I did. I talked to 21 women and 21 men, most of them in this church. I think I, I, I think I reached out to two outside of the church in each instance. I don't know why the numbers, I don't know. It just was a time thing. I just was like, oh, okay, there's 21. So, um, and I asked them various things about pornography, all right? And I wanted to get their feedback because I, I know what the research says about nationwide and all over these places, but I said, you know what? This is about us here at Refuge. This is about our people. So let me get some, let me get some, res- let me, let me get some stuff from y'all. And of the 21 on this first slide right here, 15 of 21 women responded. So pretty good, pretty good response right there. And then out of the men, I got 14 out of 21. So that's pretty good, all right? And some of them may not have responded for various reasons. They may have got busy. It was through a text, whatever. I'm, not, I'm just saying that the response was pretty good, and I got some really open and honest answers. And so I want to tell you, and again, all of this is done today in complete transparency. I want you to know what, what took place and how this information came about. I, it, it, just, it really started as just this random thing. And I, this is me, again, being completely honest with you. We've seen in politics lately, and I don't know what, by the way, you probably did really good coming at 9 o'clock because you're guaranteed to get out by 11. I don't, I, you'll be praying for that 11 o'clock because there's a lot I want to share today. Several weeks ago, you know I don't like politics, and I think it's just crazy how we get pulled in different directions, but I remember, I remember when everything was going on with Kavanaugh getting affirmed to the Supreme Court and all of these things that were going on about his past and, the, and all of these things and, and, and all this garbage that was out there, all right? I mean, just, and when I say garbage, I'm talking about just in general, everything that was out there. And I thought to myself, God just laid on my heart, like, okay, look, I'm, like, w- without doubt, I'm against any kind of negativity towards women, okay? But I, it's, it got me thinking about the problems that we see and how men view women, and pornography being a, a, a root cause of that, maybe, and that how they have this, this, I don't know, just mess up things. So this is the question that I sent to women. It was, basically was this, hey, can I ask you some questions? Get back to me and let me know. I didn't just throw it at them. I just let them know, can I talk to you about this? And so when they responded, yes, this is what I sent to them. Thank you so much. I, I truly value and honest your opinion on this. So speak uh, freely. I'm completely in agreement with what's taking place in our society and how a lot of women are coming forward against harassment and uh, and emotional abuse and all these other things, all right? So here's my question. Why doesn't the feminist movement and just women in general um, speak out against pornography and everything about what it does to the cause of dignity and respect toward women? And then I asked them to give me their opinion on pornography, and, and, I, said, and I told them in the question, I said, I'm about to challenge the men because most, uh, for the most part, it's a, it's, a, it's a struggle among men, but women are struggling as well. But I'm about to challenge the men about how it destroys their mind, and I'm of the belief that it's the biggest cancer in churches and marriages today. That's just my opinion. I would love to hear yours. Thank you for your time, girl. And guess what? Oh, I got an earful. Fifteen responded. Let me see if I can get the math right here. Twelve did it via text message or through Facebook Messenger. Two called me. Like, let me talk to you. I'm like, well, girl, let me just set everything aside. Come on. One said, can I come talk? Can I come and meet you in person? So there was a lot to be said. And among the many things that women said on this topic, among the many things that they said, here are some of the just basic stuff right here, all right? For, from women, this is some of the information that I got from women, that first slide, that they have suffered mental and physical abuse because their husbands or their past mates had watched it. They had their, some women said, hey, I struggle as well. It's a personal struggle for me too, okay? Some said, hey, my husband has struggled. 
He watches it. Uh, they believe that it leads to the mistreating of women. Uh, some women shared that they had problems in their past marriage that when it, and again, I, and I, 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 I want you to know this, okay? Th- this is going to get just real honest in here today this is, this is, because this is what was shared with me. Some of them told me, in my, in my past marriage, my husband had to watch it or else we, he didn't get excited for sex. So they would have to turn it on during, all right? Uh, women believe that men view it as harmless, but it is addicting. We're going to go on because the, the women had a lot to say here, all right? They thought it was a huge step for the church to try to reach men with this and bring it out into the open that women in society are over-sexualized, all right? It starts with women respecting themselves. Women need to take the role of respecting themselves and saying, I'm not going to put myself there, all right? One said that uh, she talks to her sons about it today. She's got a, she's got a couple of uh, teenage boys. Then uh, that her, her past husband had a problem with it and left their marriage after watching a lot of it and getting really weird. Um, and then, let's see, um, I talked to one who said that society has become numb to this problem, that it creates unrealistic expectations within the marriage. Uh, women struggle with a poor self-image. Uh, because of the, what men see and their expectations and that women need help to get out of the industry that are in the industry. Uh, let's see. Um, I, one of the women outside the church that I spoke to, I'm great friends with her, and, we're, and like, she is as far on one side of the political spectrum as you can get, okay? Like she's, and she is an outspoken feminist, and she's one of the, actually the first ones that I, re, that I reached out to. I wanted to get her opinion on this. She's all for feminist causes, and her immediate response to me was, that she's like, you know what, I, I tend to agree with you on that. I don't know why, like, women shouldn't do this because it sends the wrong message about who we are. But this is what she said to me, and this blew me away. It's a topic of conversation among feminist circles, but it's so big they don't even bother talking about it anymore. It's such a problem that they don't even address it. They just kind of ignore it because they don't know what to do about it. And then I told you this was uncomfortable. I told, like, this was not, like, this was uncomfortable. And then I had a conversation with one woman in the church and said, hey, you know what? Men just make excuses for the way that it affects them in their brain. She told me, me, that I had a lot to learn, that my sermons were half-truths and cover-ups, and she wouldn't be back at the church. So see, I told you it was uncomfortable. And she ain't been back. So that's all right. Hey, it happens. I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. So, how about the men? Yeah, with the men, I was just like, I gave them questions, all right? Because I, I, I actually reached out to the women first. And so, uh, for the men, this is what I asked them. I said, uh, you know, would you, would you give me some feedback on this? And, and I know that a lot of men eh, kind of shy away. Uh, but I said, hey, uh, at approx- these are some questions that I asked the men. At approximately what age were you exposed to pornography for the first time? And how did it happen? Do you believe it's a sin? Why or why not? Have you ever had an open, honest conversation with your wife or girlfriend about it? If so, what were their feelings? Have you ever felt that pornography has been a struggle or an addiction at some point in your life or even now? Do you believe it helps or hurts the way that you view women? Uh, If you're married, is it something that you struggle with as you entered into your marriage? Did marriage help your struggle or make it worse? If you're single, do you struggle with it now? Uh, You know, Share, feel free to share any additional thoughts, prayer requests, or let me know if you'd like to talk to me personally and confidentially about anything, all right? And so these are the responses that I got from men. It's only one slide. Guys don't talk about this nearly as much as women do. These are the responses basically that I got from men right here. Every man that I spoke to was exposed to it between the ages of 6 and 13. Between 6 and 13. Most of them... Hey, listen, I heard, I heard all kinds of stuff. I don't, even, I don't even have to put it up on the slide to remember some of the things that I was told. Some of them, they stumbled upon it, dirty magazine in the woods. Uh, some of them, their grandfather let them read the articles in Playboy. Some of them, uh, they saw it at a friend's house for the first time. Uh, so it's, but every single man that I spoke to was exposed to it sometime between 6 and 13. Every man I spoke to thought it, said it was a sin. Most had some sort of conversation with their wife at some point. Most have struggled or have had an addiction to it. Some are currently struggling right now. Some have had problems with it in their marriage. They've tried to use it in their marriage, but they come to find out it just don't work that way. And all think that it hurts the way that we view women. 
and gives unrealistic expectations. So here's what we're going to do. Listen, here's what I'm going to do. And I prayed so much about this, and I'm going to get to some things in a minute. Here, here's what we're going to do. It, this is a massive, massive problem. You need to understand my heart on this, and you need to understand where we stand as a church. In our society today, this is a massive problem. And so what we're going to try to do today is this. We're going to try to get to the tip of the iceberg. All right, we're, we're going to try to just, we're going to try to uncover some truth today, and our hope is that God will move, and so we got to start somewhere with something, okay? So we're going to give you our stance on it from a biblical perspective, and our hope for you today is this, that we can at least bring this topic out of darkness and into the light and pray that you will leave here today changed, and you'll have an open and honest conversation with God about this. You'll search your heart. You'll search your mind, and you'll be honest. And so we're going to be clear to, right off the bat with this opening statement right here, okay? Here we go. We're going to get, this is the notes portion of it. This is the scripture time, all right? So here we go. Number one is this. It's a sin. It's a sin, so it needs to be addressed. It's a sin, all right? By far, the most searched for terms on the internet today are related to pornography. By far. All right, And what Satan has done, and I'm going to speak to this spiritually in just a moment. What Satan has done is he has succeeded in twisting and perverting sex. I've spoke to this very openly and honestly before. I believe there are a few gifts that God has given us that are just better than others. And I think sex is, one, is right at the top of the list. And so what we do as humans is this. In our flesh, we do this. We say, God, I don't want to do it the way that you have it planned for me to do it. It's such a good gift. I'm going to do it. I'll do it the way I want to. I'll look at things I want to look at. I'll have sex before I get married. I'll do all of these, I'll do all these things. I'm going to take it into my own hands, and I'm going, to, I'm going to take it in my own mind, and I'm going to do this myself. I'm not going to honor your ways. And so what the enemy has done is he's taken what is good and what is right, which is loving sex between a husband and a wife, and he's replaced it with lust, pornography, and adultery. And it's, it's the first step onto a very slippery slope of just sliding back into our wicked ways. And our first passage of Scripture is Romans 6, 19. This says this, Because of the weakness of your human nature, I'm using the illustration of slavery to help you understand all this. Paul says this, okay? So get this. He says, previously you let yourselves be slaves to impurity and lawlessness, which led ever deeper into sin. You get going down this road, it's not going to end up well for you. All right? He says, now you must give yourselves to be slaves to righteous living so that you will become holy. You've got to make up your mind and in your heart to do things the way God wants you to do things or else you're going to fall deeper and deeper and deeper into sin. And I'm going to tell you, for some of you in here today, man or woman, if you're struggling, it's time to admit the struggle. If you've got kids, I'm telling you right now, if you've got a young man especially, a, young, a, 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 a child, and he's between, the and I don't know when, this is when you need to pray about it and speak to him about when you might talk to them about it. But I'll tell you what, if they're a teenager and you ain't talked to them, it's too late. I, it's not too late to talk to him. I'm saying it's too late for you to catch it before it happens. I'm telling you, you need to speak to your male children about this at a fairly early age. It's out there. They're looking at it, all right? And we know it's a sin. And, and the Bible, and this, this might be somewhat of a learning uh, uh, for you today. You might learn a little something today, all right? The Bible says there's basically three main categories of sin. There's the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those are uh, Almost every sin that we fall into falls into one of those three categories. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Scripture tells us that in 1 John 2.16, this is what the Bible says. The world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. All right? This is, listen, this is, Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. These are not from the Father, but are from the world. These are our sins. These are the things we struggle with, all right? And it undeniably meets 
a couple of criteria. Pornography, this next slide right here, is definitely part of lust of the flesh. All right? And, and it definitely falls under the sin of this next one be the lust of the eyes. All right? And it, it definitely causes us to lust after the flesh of others. It's undeniably a lust of the eyes. Listen, Scripture goes on and on about uh, some of the things that that, that, that that we can see that it's, it's, it's a negative, all right? Philippi, I'm going to get to it a little bit. Philippians 4, 8 basically says, you know, it gives us a list of things we are to think about, and it, nothing in pornography is under those things. All right, it is addictive, it is destructive, and lusting after people in our minds is offensive to God. And when it comes to how we struggle, all right, I, I, I want to put this out there because this is what I've seen from men and women, all right? Now, this is not a black and white statement. But this is what I found because I wanted to do my own somewhat like research and I wanted to talk to the people here and people that I knew about this. And, and, and this is what I found for the most part. When it comes to women, they struggle in silence and confusion. Why does he want to watch that? I don't know why he wants to watch that all the time but I better not say anything because he's a red-blooded man, and that's what men do. So I'm just going to be quiet, and I'm going to let him do it because if I talk to him about this, it might get uncomfortable, and he might get mad at me, and so they stay silent about it. It's what I've heard from a lot of women, and they're very confused. They're confused because they go, hey, listen, this is a very natural reaction from women. Am I not good enough? Why does he want to look at somebody else? And so they suffer in silence and confusion when it comes to this. And it winds up destroying their marriage, and it destroys all intimacy within the marriage. And here's the problem for men and women, all right? Here's the problem. Your first intimacy you were created for was intimacy with God. Intimacy with God but you're lacking it in some area of your life, and so you, you, you go out and you, and, and you try to find it here. But women, oftentimes, they struggle in silence and confusion when it comes to pornography. And men, here's your struggle. You struggle in fear and shame. You're afraid to tell anybody what's going on. You're afraid to be honest. You're afraid to admit you've got a problem when it comes to your computer screen or your phone or your time or whatever it is you're doing. You're afraid to tell somebody. You're afraid, hey, you're afraid if I, if, I, if I mention to my wife that I've got a problem, I'm afraid she's going to leave me. And, and you're ashamed because of the fact that you do this in these dark places and in these lonely moments. You're, you're afraid that's where you turn. But this is where we've got to be today. You've got to understand this today. As uncomfortable as it is today, I've never, ever, Seeing this sanctuary so silent, all right? As uncomfortable as you are today, we want you to step out of darkness and into light. And that light, when you step into it, it might hurt just a little bit. And it might be uncomfortable. But you need to understand this today. Men and women, you need to know that you can step out of this darkness you don't have to live this way. We want you to step out. You will not be condemned. You are going to be comforted. And listen, the challenge for you today is this. If you're married, if you're dating, if you've got somebody here in your family, you have to let them step out without fear, without shame, Without silence and without confusion, you've got to let them step out. You've got to let them do this, or it's only going to lead into a deeper problem. Anytime, listen, <laughs> whoo, this is where I'm going to tell you just a little bit about what's going on with me right now. Anytime you want to address this issue, I, I just believe this, okay? It's su it, th this is such a powerful, negative force in our world today. All right, you've got to understand this next point, and I would be remiss if I did not mention it. When it comes to pornography and when it comes to the struggle in your life 
or the struggle in someone's life, you know, this next slide right here is number two is this. It's spiritual warfare. It is the enemy getting in your head and in your heart and in your mind and telling you, hey, there ain't nothing wrong with it. And anytime you want to address this, and you're and like, I, I'm telling just and when you want to bring this out, like I'm trying to bring this out today, all right? When you want to do this, I, I, I prayed. I knew, I knew about a week and a half ago this was going to be the week I was going to preach on this. And I'm going to tell you what I started doing. I started praying right then. I'm like, God, I know that week leading up to that sermon is going to be rough because the enemy is going to be fighting me so many ways because he doesn't want me to. Pr- Y'all, he don't want you to hear this. He does not want you to hear this today. He wants you to just stay where you're at and just not move forward with God. That's what he wants. And so if someone's going to tell you these things today and tell you it's a sin and that there's healing to be had and that there's victory to be had, he's been fighting me all week, and I knew it was going to be a tough week. I just didn't realize how tough it was going to be. I prayed for strength and for wisdom for this whole, like a week and a half ago, I was like, God, this week, I, I, I need this. And again, this is my own personal struggle here, but because Satan does not want the church to address this. On Monday, this like evil sickness hit our house, and my oldest daughter got it. And all Monday night was a night of no sleep. I've always been the nighttime guy because my wife has to get up at 3.30 a.m. and go to work, so I've always been the nighttime take care of the kids guy. It happened all night, Monday night. I didn't get a chance to really do anything I wanted to do as far as really studying and honing in on this. All night, Monday night, I was awake. Tuesday, we just kind of stumbled through the day. Wednesday, we find out that Zeta's got it. We got trunk or treat up here. We're running around like mad people with our heads cut off trying to get everything done. And, uh, and then Zeta gets sick. We're up all night, Wednesday night again. Thursday, we kind of stumbled through some things. Uh, just kind of, I, I don't know, it's just, a, and it's constant care for these kids. So, like, it's not, you can't really leave their side and do anything, all right? And and the kids were sick really up until yesterday. Zoe's sick again. My wife got it last night. She's at home today. I've been bathing in Lysol all week. <laughs> I've just been walking around with Lysol all week, just spraying everything and all. I, I just, everywhere, I, anytime I touch anything. So I think that's, I mean, I just, I've been like inhaling it. So, um, but listen, it, it brought to mind this scripture. It, it brought to mind this scripture. You need to understand when I say it's spiritual warfare, the enemy wants nothing more than to just destroy you. In Ephesians 6, 12, speaks to this right here. We're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but it, let, let, this, let this get in your mind today. But against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. That's why we have to put on the full armor of God. Read Ephesians 6, 13 through 18 on how to fight that. It's putting on the full armor of God. It has nothing to do with our strength. It has to do with His strength. We've got to rely on God and his strength to get us through this. And so very quickly here, and I've got, again, we're going to go through these next points kind of quickly. But I want you today, listen, to understand this is tough. But number three is this, is that you can have victory over pornography. You can. You can. For those that are involved in it, God can and will give you victory, all right? And he will give you freedom from it. And I want to give you just really, and I've got some, I'm not going to read the scripture from the screen, but I've got got a few points here on how you can have victory over pornography and some steps you can take, and I've got some scripture to, to reference later for you, okay? Here's how you can have victory today. The first thing is, A, is this, is you can confess to God. You need to confess that you have a problem. You need, he already knows it, but you need to confess to God that you have a problem. 1 John 1, 9 says to confess your sins because he is faithful and just to forgive us. He knows we struggle. And you know what we do? We hide it from him. We think we do. And hey, don't beat yourself up if you've tried to do that. Adam and Eve did it in the Garden of Eden. Humans have been doing it for as long as humans have been around. But we can't hide from God. So confess. 
This next one is, it, this is, this is, you need some wisdom here, so you need to pray about this next one. I would encourage you, let her be, to confess to somebody that you trust. James 5, 16 says, confess to one another in order that you might be healed. Find someone you can trust that will pray for you, that will, that will be there to encourage you, that will be there if you, in a moment of weakness, they can call you. You need that. You need that accountability. And by the way, I'm just going to put this out here for married couples. Your spouse does not need to be your accountability partner. They're your husband or your wife. Okay? Confess to somebody. C is this. Here's another way you can have victory. Turn from your sin and turn to God. Romans 12, 2 says, don't conform to the world. We saw all the things that are of the world, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. Don't conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds through Scripture. Turn from your sin, turn to God. Romans 12, 2 tells us this. And listen, this next one right here, I, I know it, it, this is so hard because our world does not give us the things that are mentioned in Philippians 4, 8. It doesn't give us things that are true and noble and honorable and praiseworthy because everywhere we go, we see billboards, we see commercials, we, th we see things. So we have to intentionally do this next thing. Letter D is this, is that we need to fill our minds with things of God. We do it through reading His Word, through spending time in prayer, by thinking about things that Scripture tells us are true. Philippians 4, 8, fill your minds with things that are true, noble, honorable, pure, just, Worthy of praise. And then listen, I, I'm <laughs> this last one, all of these right there, you go, man, that, I, I didn't say it was easy to overcome it. Through the power of God, you can do this, and you've got to be serious about doing this. You see those first four right there, and you go, okay, I can do that. It's always going to come down to this last one right here. Letter E is this. You've got to yield to the Holy Spirit. Your flesh will continually battle, battle against the Holy Spirit. You have got to yield to the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5, 16 and 17 says this, Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives, then you won't do what your sinful nature craves because it's just the opposite of the Holy Spirit. You've got to yield to God, to what He's doing. Listen, take some, here's some ways that you can begin to do that. Take some practical steps to reduce your exposure to devices. Install blocking devices on your computer or on your phone. Limit the television and video usage. Find another Christian who'll pray for you and help hold you accountable. And listen, it, it, it all boils down to this, okay? And I didn't know how long this was going to take today, and I had no idea how long I would be up here talking today and just how uncomfortable we'll get. And it's all right. I'm just going to embrace it. I want freedom for you. I don't want anyone in this room, anyone in this town, anybody who follows Jesus to be bogged down by sin. And I have found that this is one area where many people do get bogged down. And so it all boils down to this very last point right here. And it is really, this is where you got you to answer this question. All right? And it's this right here. Are you willing to fight? Because you can give in if you want. You can give in. God's not going to force His will upon any of us. He is going to speak to us through the Holy Spirit, and we must yield to Him, and we must be guided by that. So how are we going to respond? And the question is this, are you really different? Are we going to listen to this today, search our hearts, Search our minds, deny the problem, and walk right back away from what we've been, and walk right back into it. Or will you humble yourself before God today? I mean, the choice is yours. Because here's the thing you're going to humble yourself to God today? Let me tell you what it's going to involve. Chances are, it's going to involve a lifetime of temptation. Temptation is not sin. Temptation is not sin. I shared, this has been about a year, year and a half ago. It was on a Wednesday night, so a lot of y'all weren't here. Hint, hint, you need to be here on Wednesday nights. Um, 
Just missing. I love y'all. I shared about a year and a half ago on a Wednesday night that I, I had recently, and it, I, again, I don't, I don't remember the date or whatever, uh, but listen, the, the more you fight this temptation, the weaker the enemy gets. You understand that you can gain strength. God will give you strength, okay? And he's been working on me for years in this area. But a year and a half ago, I had, I had one instance where I, I, I never felt the temptation so strongly to get on my phone and look at pornography. About a year and a half ago, I was out of town. Jess and the girls were here. I was, all, I was by myself. I was all alone. I was this, you know, and the enemy was like, you know, I'm like, I had to fight it. I had to fight it. I had to fight it. I had to pray. I had to pray. God, get me through this. Get me through this. So the temptation's there. It will involve a lifetime of temptation, struggle, perhaps moment, moments of weakness and or failure. But are you willing to fight anyway for what's right and for what God wants to do in your life, knowing that victory is yours to be had? Because the struggle's real. Listen, if you're single... If you're single in here today, I, I reached out to single men and single women and married men and married women. And if you're single, this is what I got a lot of times. Listen, I'm lonely. I'm lonely. I want that intimacy. I desire that. And sometimes I give in. Your heart's desire is for God, but you crave that connection. My encouragement to you today is this. Connect with God. Connect with God. Seek Him. Cry out to Him in those times of temptation. If you're married, hey, listen. Marriages get stale and difficult. That's just the reality of it. I've dealt more in the past month, and I continue. God keeps bringing these into my lives. You need to hear this today, especially if you've been married 15 years or more. For whatever reason, I don't know if it's the season of this in my life and ministry or what, but God has been bringing me couples who have been married 15 years or longer, and they're in the pits. They're struggling. They're struggling for a number of reasons. But they're struggling. It's gotten stale. It's gotten difficult. I was thinking this week that I think we ought to get rid of honeymoons as soon as marriages start. And this is what I think we ought to do. I think we ought to give, I think we ought to give uh, the husband and the wife two challenging full-time jobs, put them in a house with a mortgage, give them a steady supply of bills and responsibilities, throw them a sick toddler, throw in a newborn just for fun, tell them they need to lead God-honoring, Jesus-following lives that include faithful worship and service at a local church, and if they survive that five years, we'll send them on a honeymoon. Because that's what marriage is all about. It gets stale, and it gets difficult, and it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough. So if you're struggling today and you want freedom, here's what we're going to do. Listen, again, this is a sensitive topic. I'm aware of that. Some of y'all are like, he'll talk about anything, anytime, and he don't care. Yes, I do care. I care about your feelings. I care about where you're at, and I want you to know that you are in a place where you can be open and honest. So we're going to have prayer down front in a minute. And this is what it's going to be. And I prayed, I, I prayed about this. How are we going to do this, God? Because people, again, men, fear and shame. Women, silence and confusion. They don't want to deal with it. This is, this is, all, this is all we're going to do. Okay, listen, and don't feel like I'm, I'm not trying to force anyone to do anything. But if you are willing to fight, if you're willing to fight, I'm going to ask you to come pray. Maybe it's for, listen, it might be in your own life. It might be in the life of your spouse. It might be for your child. It might be for a loved one. You may be someone who rarely gets tempted in this area, or you may be someone today who is a full-blown pornography addict. We love you either way. We understand your struggle. And we're going to start today, and we're going to start this process by coming to pray if this applies to you in any way whatsoever. There is no judgment. There is no condemnation. Because here's the question is this. Listen, are we really different? Are we really different? Or are we going to be like the rest of the world and just kind of gloss this over and just, you know, dismiss it because it, that's who we are? 
I've thought about this. I'm like, you know, are we serious about truly following Jesus? Or do we just want to say that we are and create an atmosphere where that's possible but not really do anything about it? Oh, church is great, man. You can come in there and do whatever you want. You come in my church. You come down front and pray. And nobody's going to say anything. You can bring all your weaknesses. You can bring all your struggles in. It's a great atmosphere, but nobody ever does it. Or are we going to be serious about it today and say, you know what? I want to break out of this. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of the struggle. I need to come pray for myself. I need to come pray for my spouse. I want to come pray for my children. I want to pray for my marriage. I want to pray that when I'm tempted, I don't give in. I just want, listen, I want to be different, and I need to know that I'm not alone. You're not alone. We're going to fight this together, all right? Now, I want you to know, (laughs) some of you are like, man, is he going to preach on this the whole series? No, no, no. I'll give you some more uncomfortable truths. Don't worry. I got got plenty of them. I got plenty of uncomfortable truths. This is the one, like, this is it today for this series. And, uh, you know, whatever. Like, this, I've mentioned it in past sermons. I've challenged men and women before. But this today, it got all of our attention. And I want you to understand something today. If God's got your attention, just be obedient. Just be obedient and pray out. So if you want to be different today, listen. And you're just willing to say, I'm, listen, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. Just come down and know you're not alone. Amen? Let's pray together.